Hey, welcome back to the Five Lakes Garage. And today we are going back to our 1976 Aqua Sport. All right, so if you check out all the other videos, check out the whole series, there's a whole playlist on this thing because we have rewired all the accessories, we have rewired the trolling motor, we actually got the tower of power running and she is running great. Uh, so we did the carburetors, completely redone because they were, they were jacked up. <laughs> check out the video on that one. Uh, the electrical was actually kind of shoddy. And so seeing as that uh, the electrical was kind of shoddy, uh, I went ahead and replaced everything. I didn't really do in that much detail, but now we're going to fix that because I've had a couple comments, uh, thanks to you out there that has uh, brought it to my attention that I did not go into enough detail. So this video here is for you. So anyway, uh, tower power, two cycle, two stroke. There's three major factors you need to do about the electrical to make sure you get spark in your tower power first thing you're going to do you check would be your kill switch now your kill switch is the one that is up there on your gear shift that has a hopefully has a toggle that goes all the way out to your belt or to your belt loop your life jacket whichever so if you fall out it will kill the engine an easy way to test that out crank up the engine if it doesn't crank don't have spark whatever pull the black and yellow wire in this particular case this guy right here so it is connected to your um, power pack and it will say black and yellow i don't know if you can actually see that hopefully you can anyway uh pull that wire off go ahead and pull it off of both power packs because there will be two of them um, and then try to crank it if it does crank then there's something wrong with your kill switch quick and easy way of checking it pull those off crank it if it does crank you're good to go and if it doesn't hook it back up and grab your ohm meter let's check out your stator now this right here is just an electromagnet comes all the way around and it makes electricity uh you have different wires coming out here this right here is for your regulator which is right here and what this is going to do is take the ac current from this guy convert it over to DC and actually charge your battery. So we need to test this guy. I'm gonna show you how to do that here in a second. Right underneath that will be your trigger. And I do believe this was my main issue uh, when I actually couldn't get the things to run reliably. And then once again, we're going to ohm out some of these leads. And then if you don't get the right readings, it's jacked. Go ahead and get another one. And then the final thing was the power packs, which are these guys. And they are two on this one here. Three cylinders have one, three cylinders have the other one. So if you only had like about a 50, I think only had three cylinders, you're only gonna have one. This is a 115, I believe the 90 is about the same thing, just a little bit smaller. And they all run exactly the same. Now, I did look at the prices on these guys. For two of these, it was 50 bucks. I figured I might as well get it done. Now, I'm sure these Chinese knockoffs will actually burn out eventually, so I'm gonna keep these guys around because I do believe they are pretty good. Uh, the only thing I need to do is actually clean out all the leads because they are corroded and nasty. And that could be one reason why I was getting an intermittent type of issue with those guys. So, uh, so where's the where's the stator? It sits right underneath your flywheel. Uh, the trigger is also on, under there as well. And then, of course, you got the two power packs. Now, I've already uh, disconnected the trigger real quick because we're going to go ahead and test that because that is what my problem was. Anyway, uh, so let's go ahead and start off with testing out your stator. Now, you do not need to take this off to test it. You do need to take your leads off, though. And those are right here. So you have the red wire and the blue wire, red wire and blue wire. Just go ahead and take those off because if you try to get an ohmic value while they're hooked up, you're gonna get ohmic resistance through the engine itself and that's not gonna give you a right reading. So let's go test this guy out and show you what readings you should be getting. All right, as you can see, basic ohmic uh, multimeter. So I have it on regular ohms because we're going to be testing these wires here. Now the red wires, you should, and believe in this one, I think I was getting 300 ohms. Let's find out. There we go. Kind of need four hands. All right, so it's getting about 292. That's a little bit more than what the book recommends, but we should be in okay shape, mostly because that one's working and it, uh, it runs fine. Now the blue one over here, let's hook that guy up. Now this guy 
is going to be a whole lot more. And the reason why you have these two here is because one is for low range and the other one's for high range. So if you're at like 2000 RPM, uh, the red ones will actually kick in. If you're higher than that, the blue one's going to kick in. Now these guys here, let me check my readings. All right, so we have the blue. This is going to be the high range and we should get a whole lot more than 300 ohms. I'm not showing anything right now because you have to change the uh, scale. So I'm going to click the button. Now we're at about 1250. So uh, this stator is actually in okay shape. So that probably wasn't my issue. I went ahead and got another one only because this thing is 46 years old. Might as well change it while I got everything out. Now let's go ahead and test out your trigger. Now the trigger, you have two sides of it because this trigger is for a uh, two power pack unit. It should be the, one, uh, the 90 and the 115 and I believe the 175 are basically all the same. Uh, so uh, just grab one side or the other. We're going to test them both. So we're going to test the white wire. And we are at the high range of the millimeter and we're going to go to the brown wire. Oops. All right. So we are at roughly 9 to 10,000 ohms. Not bad. That's about what we need. So we're going to go over to the other side. All right, so I'm on the uh, purple and the white, which I should get no more than about 1,400 ohms, and we're not getting anything. All right, so I'll go ahead and check the other side too. So your white will be your, almost like your ground, I guess. Just so that'll be your common. Go to the brown. So I'm not getting hard. I'm not getting anything. So there is a open. Oh, there you go. Hold on, I just got it. They look about eight, 800 ohms. Try the purple. Up, oh, up, oh, up. Oh. Bouncing around, you're looking at like 400. So this guy here is just not reliable. Uh, if I wiggle the wires a little bit, I get, um, I get a resistance. And if I wiggle it some more, it gives me nothing. So I'm thinking this was my main issue all along. Yeah. So let's look at, all right, now we're looking on the side of the engine. This right here would be one side of the trigger. So this is the new setup. Now let's test that guy. Let's try, let's try this. So we're going to put the white wire, white wire and purple wire. Let's look at that. Yep. That looks about good. It's about 14, 15 or so. It bounces around a little bit. Let's try the brown and the white. Looking at 11 to 1300 uh, ohms. So this trigger is actually working properly. And if you remember on this guy, it was kind of hit and miss. If I wiggle it just right, it gave me something. If it didn't, it didn't. So I'm thinking the trigger was my main issue. I went ahead and replaced everything because it is so old. Now the other part that I did to replace would be the power packs. And like I said, these things were a little bit corroded. So I could have cleaned them off, but I went ahead and replaced it anyway. Cause like I said, it's 50 bucks. Come on. Anyway, uh, let me go ahead and put these guys back on. They are labeled. So we have brown, we have white, and we have purple. Quick and easy. Can't mess it up, I think. All right, I went ahead and put that guy back on there because this thing does actually work, but I just wanted to show you how to test those. Now, if you do need to pull this thing off, I'll go ahead and pull the flywheel off just to show you where everything's at. Probably won't tear it all the way down, but it'll at least get you enough to get you there in order to finish the job. So, uh, a couple things you really want to do prior to pulling this off. Oh, hello there. Thanks for watching. And if you really like it, go ahead and hit subscribe. If you really like it, go ahead and hit the like button and go ahead and comment because I want to hear what you have to say. Could be good, could be bad. I don't know. Let me know. And if you really want to send anything to the channel, help us out, whichever, here's a P.O. box that we opened up in case you want to send something. I'll do a video and see what it is. Have fun. Enjoy the rest of the show. All right. Now I'm up here on a stool with a bone leg. That's okay. It's healing, hopefully. Uh, so anyway, you need to make sure that your stuff is at top dead center. It's very easy because it's a two cycle. So if you look down in there, see if I can get it over there. Anyway, it's 
kind of hard to see, but if you look down there, you will see the top of the piston. It comes right up there to the top. Now, if you look over here, down here you have your timing marks. So right at zero is probably around TDC. Now, once you actually take this off, you um, there's only one way to put it back on because uh, the holes will line up. You line up your mark, you line up your holes, you're back right where you were. So let's go ahead and take these little bolts off. This right here to actually get the flywheel off so we can actually get underneath and actually see what um, what we have to take off in order to get down to the stator. Take these off. Oh, forgot one more thing. There's a bolt up here. You got to get your trigger thing out of the way. Oh, and of course it's a different size. Is that a pain in the butt? All right. Now, take your little trigger off. Only one way to put that one back on, so you're fine. There you go. All right, so if you look inside the flywheel, you got these little magnets all the way around. Those go around, and this right here is your um, stator. Now, obviously this is a new one, so I already put it in there. Now, in order to get this guy off, Unfortunately, you gotta pull that bolt off there. Now that is a nylon nut, so I'm not gonna take that off for right now, uh, only because I will need to get a new nut. You don't have to, but I like to get new nuts when I have nylons on there. So in order to get the stator out, one, two, three, and four, um, pull those guys off, and then the trigger is right underneath it. Very easy, and this just floats around. So these are Allen's, pull that off, which is this guy. Pull this guy off, and then right underneath it, you'll find this guy. Now this guy is actually connected to this rod here, which is connected to your throttle. So it's kind of like your, um, like an advance. That will actually, that's why this thing kind of rotates just a little bit. But anyway, pull that off, put it back on. It's easy peasy wheezy. And then uh, if you did not move your engine, it still should be at top dead center and you should be able to put everything back in place. Just look for your timing marks. If I can do it without my glasses. All right, don't forget your plate. Put that back on there. Line up your holes or else you're gonna be very unhappy. Put your plate back on or your flywheel. All right. Make sure that your hole, your number one is lined up. Okay. Put your top plate on. All right, once you get this in here, do diagonals, make sure it's gonna lay down flat. Go ahead and put your pointer back on. And if you did everything right, this didn't move, you're still in top dead center. That should point to the zero or point wherever you left it or you took it off. And once I tighten this down, I will show you. All right. All right, so we're gonna move this thing because you can move it back and forth. There you go. And I'm gonna put it right on the zero because that's where I took it off. And then tighten it down. There you go. You put a wrench on that, tighten it down, and we should be ready to put things back together. All right, don't forget to put your spark plug back in. Now these things do foul up. Uh, they, I like these a little bit more than some of the other ones, like this one over here. This one actually came out of a jet ski, I think it was. But anyway, it's got the electrode that kind of comes across. This one here doesn't foul as bad, but you still need to uh, replace them about once a year. Uh, they do get corroded because if you look at, uh, oh, look, I just broke the porcelain. That's awesome. Anyway, some of these things are getting corroded, so I'm going to be replacing these soon. But, yeah, I just use some NGKs. Make sure you replace it before you try to crank it. All right, hopefully I didn't mess anything up. So I have, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, reconnect the battery, and then we're going to go ahead and crank it up to make sure I didn't mess anything up. I hope I didn't because she was running great before I started this. All right. So I'm only going to run it for a second because I don't have any water on it. Yeah. All right. I didn't mess anything up. 
But anyway. So this is just some quick uh, troubleshooting tips. Uh, hopefully that kind of cleared up a few things. Um, I kind of wish I did a little bit better job on it, but hey, hopefully it helped. If it doesn't help, let me know. I'll tell you some some other uh, some of my brothers and sisters out there in the YouTube world that does a little bit better job than me, and I'll give them credit for that because they have done a fantastic job. So we're just still learning on this uh, two-stroke tower of power, but the more we learn, the more we try to teach you guys. So anyway, uh, check out your stators. Check out your triggers, which I think was my problem, and I didn't really need to spend all the money on a new stator, but I did anyway. I'm gonna keep these guys around just in case that one craps out. Also, uh, just go in there and fix it yourself. Uh, try it out a few times. If you cannot get it, then sure, take it to somebody, but the more you try it yourself, the more you're gonna learn and the more you're gonna be okay, because you can't really call AAA. I guess you could if you're out there in the middle of the lake or middle of the river, middle of the ocean, and be like, hey, my engine don't work. You should be able to fix it, hopefully, and get you back to dry land. Anyway, check out all the other stuff. Enjoy. Keep the tower powers running. And we'll check out another future episode, which I have some upgrades that are getting ready to start. Maybe not tonight, because it's already dark. Anyway, happy fishing, happy boating, good luck, and have fun. Later!